Hi everyone, welcome to In Case You Missed It with Rukshan, an end of the week roundup of some of the news stories you might have missed. First up, we have some breaking news. And just announced before by our premiere, our lockdown is apparently ending at some point next week. But is it really ending? Because you could still see that there's restrictions on our ability to travel into regional parts of our state. There's restrictions on the number of people that can gather outside. There's restrictions on the number of people that can gather indoors. There's restrictions on businesses and some businesses will still remain closed. So this lockdown ending, the headlines that you're going to see over the next couple of days, this hysteria about all this being over, is just more propaganda from the Andrews administration. I mean, it's welcome news for sure that things are finally starting to change, but it's not the end of the lockdown as being said by Daniel Andrews, and I'm sure as will be pushed by the media. But the reason I touched on this press conference was there was a very interesting question that I wanted to focus on that was asked of our Chief, Chief Health Officer, Brett Sutton. Do you have evidence of people actually getting COVID outside? Yeah, we do. Uh, again, it's hard to quantify because, you know, we've got a lot of exposures uh, for people now with, with all the active cases that we do, but it, it's known. And, the, you know, the most famous example of the Rose Garden outside the White House with a, a super spreading event outside um, is, is probably a case in point. Now, you might be wondering why that answer is so important. Well, if you've been watching the media and the news over the last couple of weeks, you would have seen all these headlines and it, would have, it was about the super spread of events, these protests and how dangerous they are and they're spreading the virus everywhere and it's just so dangerous to be outdoors in these mass groups of people because the virus will spread. So you would think that our Chief Health Officer, Brett Sutton, particularly based on the uh, advice given by Dr. John Setka about the impact that these protests have had on super spreading events, would have been able to point to these outdoor gatherings that have been happening in our state as the cause of, you know, proof of outdoor transmission of the virus. But he did it. Again, he went back to some event that we, we are 100% not sure if it was actually reported correctly at the time as well from the United States during the election last year. That's the only thing that he can point to about evidence or proof of outdoor transmission. So all these stories you've been hearing about protests and it's being dangerous and all these people doing this stuff and spreading stuff, it's just all a media beat up. And speaking of protests, there was actually a whole range of protests across our nation and across the world yesterday. But I want to point your attention to this, this very funny clip that you might have missed that's doing the rounds on social media, hundreds of thousands of views, and it's a video of the police checking a coffee cup to ensure that the person had coffee in the cup so that they could verify that he was allowed to have his mask off. I'm drinking my coffee, I'm Where'd going for a walk. Sesame and Soul, it's an absolute it beautiful awesome? cafe. They do Lebanese pies. Yep. It's amazing. Brilliant. But nothing is as amazing right. as our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Okay. All right, have a good night, he right. loves you all. I hope that you all turn to him before the day of judgment because judgment is for all of us, myself included. I work out. Did you just want to check if there's actually anything in that? Oh, yeah. There's coffee in there. Enjoy your coffee. Thank you. Jesus loves you all. God bless. I'll be praying for you all. What pure insanity. But it's doing the rounds. And for some reason, Australian uh, police, Australian ministers, our premiers, our. You know, all of our news media people, they're making the rounds online overseas in viral videos because some of the things they are saying and doing, and just to borrow a phrase from our assistant commissioner of police, are batshit crazy. And the rest of the world is looking and laughing. Take a look at this guy. From Saturday, the 13th of November, if you have not received at least your first dose of a vaccine, you will not be permitted to attend your workplace in that role and a failure to comply with the direction is a $5,000 fine. That means that workers must have received at least their first dose by Friday the 12th of November at the latest. You have 30 days. I mean, this clip is being shown all over the world. It's spreading like wildfire to show how crazy things are in Australia because not only are we telling people that they'll lose their jobs if they're unvaccinated, right? We are also telling them that they'll be fined $5,000. So the people that are out of work, that don't have any jobs, will further find them $5,000. People are looking at Australia and going, wow, these people have really, really lost it. So as I was saying, there's been protests all around the country today, 
protest in Melbourne, I went to cover Victoria Police with hundreds of officers successfully shut it down. I've linked to the live stream so you can see what happened before it was shut down, but it was pretty much just hundreds of police surrounding people in the park and asking them for their details and then making arrests if they weren't able to provide it. Around the rest of the country though, we had protests in Brisbane, in Perth, in South Australia. So I'm just gonna link some videos to those protests so you can see, because there was a much larger turnout. Yep. We want a free Victoria. Yep. There's no resistance. They're just going to run right through us. Right, right. Nobody should be forced to have anything forced upon them. Someone said you have to wear a mask. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't really want to. How do you feel about the vaccine mandate? Oh, got a scrap. Look, personally, uh, I don't mind. Like Absolutely not. Our biggest sport for us in World War II for our freedom. <laughs> Just across the seas to our neighbours in New Zealand, they had one of the biggest protests thus far in their country. to this video from Eurix who sent it in to me uh, shows you some of the speeches and just the crowd that was there as always for all these videos I'll link them below next up we have Kyrie Irving so same issue Kyrie Irving is a USA NBA basketball player you know not just some uh, fill-in player for the team he is a headline act one of the best players in the league even I wear shoes with his name on it right and I'm not even a basketball fan having said that <laughs> Kyrie Irving actually is in opposition to these vaccination mandates and he's made his position clear that he will not be forced into this position in the league. You think I really want to give up on my dream to go after a championship? In order to be on the team, I have to be vaccinated. I chose to be unvaccinated and that was my choice. This is not a political thing here. It's not about the NBA. It's not about any organization. It's really about my life and what I'm choosing to do. Very respectfully, he's done that as well. And he's actually walked away from about $17 million that he would have earned in that season, right? That's, that's a big deal. And he's a big name athlete. And he is speaking up for the people in a similar position. Pay attention to what's going on out in the real world. You know, people are losing their jobs to these mandates. Uh, people are having to make choices with their own lives, which I respect, you know, and, and I don't wanna um, sit here and, and play on people's emotions either. Just use logic. You know, what would you do? You know, if, if you felt uncomfortable going into the season uh, when you were promised that you would have exemptions or that you didn't have to be forced to get the vaccine. You know, we haven't seen in Australia, especially our athletes, our celebrities, really kind of coming to the forefront and speaking out on these issues. We've had one or two here and there, but you're finding in America a lot of these high profile athletes and celebrities uh, that are, you know, courageous enough to speak up are actually doing that and it's causing a lot of headaches for the media who try to spin this in another direction, right? You will see that right now for Kyrie Irving, he's facing a massive media backlash. Irving's anti-vax tirade was somehow compared to, wait for it, oh, just you wait, to the activism of the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali. Kyrie Irving is not the modern day Muhammad Ali. He is a famous person using his famous person platform to put others at risk of a deadly airborne disease that has wreaked havoc on the human race and disproportionately on people who look like Kyrie Irving. Muhammad Ali, on the other hand, took a political stance as a conscientious objector to the Vietnam War, saying that he refused to go to war and shoot my brother or some darker people or some poor hungry people in the mud for big, powerful America. 
Ali risked going to prison because of his stance. Kyrie Irving has walked away from $17 million to stand by his principles. But the media in America want you to know that it's not the same thing to act on these kind of principles. And finally from America, we have one of the funniest incidents, I think, which is a Joe Rogan interview with Dr. Sanjay Gupta. Now, Dr. Sanjay Gupta is the resident TV doctor for CNN. Uh, this guy even appeared in uh, the movie Contagion, right? right? This is a TV doctor. He likes being on the screen. He's very similar to who we have here as uh, Dr. Norman Swan, right? On ABC. Right. On television, they just play this role where they're just a part of this kind of propaganda machine. And Joe Rogan, to his credit, you know, it was a long interview with Dr. Sanjay Gupta, but Joe Rogan called him out on it and said, why is your network lying about the medication that I received for my, uh, for my COVID uh, diagnosis? Thing, I'm missing. Do you think I that want that's to... a problem, that your news network it was not... lies? Well, I don't, I don't think. Dude. I mean, what did they say? They lied what and they said say? I was taking horse dewormer. First of all, it was prescribed to me by a doctor yeah, yeah, yeah. along they with shouldn't have said a it was bunch worse. of if, other if medications. Was, if you got a human pill because there were people that were taking it the veterinary medication and I you're not obviously you got it from a doctor so that it shouldn't be called that. Ivermectin can be a very effective medication for parasitic disease and as you say it's probably you know I think what a quarter billion people have taken it around the world. More, I get that. Way more. So way more. Can, Billions can, of people have taken it. Can I just come back to the one I want to talk about? I, two, no, 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 two, no, no, two no, things no. on you the ledger. To, you have before we get to that. Does it bother you that the news network you work for out and out lied, well, just outright lied about me taking horse dewormer. They, they they shouldn't have said that. Why did they do that? I don't know. You didn't ask. You I didn't think there was. Did, you're the medical guy over there. I didn't ask. I should have asked before but they coming did into it the podcast. Straight out said that your network is lying. Why are they lying? And that's true because this particular uh, medication that uh, Joe Rogan is talking about, one which I can't mention for issues around censorship. Uh, is one that uh, Joe Rogan was 100% correct. And CNN and all these other networks in America have been making this baseless claim that this is something that's only used in animals. And that is not true in, what, in any way whatsoever. But check out the media and how far they've gone to label this particular medication as belonging only to be used on animals. Ivermectin is something more often used to deworm horses. And telling his 13 million Instagram followers that he was treated with several drugs and he included ivermectin on the list, a drug used for livestock. Rogan said the word ivermectin. Yes, that's the deworming medicine made to kill parasites and farm animals. You have individuals like Joe Rogan, for example, who uh, who don't want to take an experimental vaccine, but will take horse dewormer. Ivermectin is often used to deworm livestock. Ivermectin apparently given to deworm animal. Joe Rogan, uh, he came down with COVID. He says, he says he's been taking the uh, livestock dewormer. Uh, ivermectin is a drug that is commonly used as a horse dewormer. Does it bother you that the news network you work for out and out lied, well, just outright lied about me taking horse dewormer? They, they, they shouldn't have said that. Why did they do that? I don't know. You didn't ask? You I didn't, didn't think that was your, you're the medical guy over there. I didn't Ridiculous, ask. right? You know, one day we'll be able to freely speak about this medication without all this censorship and the record I think will be corrected at that time. Back to uh, news from Victoria, and this is not something you would have missed because it's ongoing. It's going to be going on for the next couple of weeks, and that is our IBAC hearings here in Victoria into corruption uh, within our current Labour government. Now, if you haven't been watching it, you know, it goes pretty much, it's like a Netflix series, right? You just goes, put it in the background, you let it play, and you can just listen to the sweet, sweet sounds of our politicians and their staffers squealing having to air their dirty laundry to the public. If you get a chance, watch IBAC. If you don't get to watch IBAC, there is a Twitter um, handle and uh, uh, Instagram page and a Facebook group, uh, Voice for Victoria. They do fantastic work in terms of summarizing a lot of these things that are going on. And finally, just for some personal things. So, you know, I've been doing a few things as well. I did an interview with 
uh, GB News from the UK just discussing some of my protest coverage. And I also recently did an interview with Six News AU that will be airing uh, next week on Tuesday. Young young guys uh, still in school, they've put together this kind of media organization and they're just doing fantastic things because it's what's needed, right? We need to challenge these notions of establishment media and it's just great to see uh, you know, just such a young group of people doing this. And, and guys, that's the end of this week's episode of In Case You Missed It. I'm going to leave this episode with this clip of the North Korean military doing what they're doing North Korean style in front of Kim Jong-un and it's just fantastic. A lot of people are laughing at it but I think it should <laughs> really scare us because I think these guys are you know, as crazy as all this looks they're pretty intent on what they want to do whereas here in Australia and around the West our military is focused on all sorts of other social justice issues. Something to think about. Thank you.